Welcome friends, today I want to talk to you about my own journey with human design and how it has changed my life, how it has improved it for the better. So I'm gonna cut right to the chase. The first thing that I want to say though, I've known human design for about 10 years now, I had my first encounter with it, but it took me a few years until I started uh, taking it away from an intellectual understanding to actually implementing it and experimenting it in my own life. It's not really good if you just know the human design system intellectually you really have to take the chance and say like okay let's try it in my own life let's see what happens if i really follow these rules and hear these authorities and all these things and let's see what experience we will have the first thing that i heard about human design is the types yes yeah, the first thing that you come into contact with and i've heard that I was a projector and i remember the first time that i heard you're not supposed to work and there is nothing more dangerous for projectors than exhaustion. You're not here to work. You're not. You're here to organize energy. You're here to guide energy. And you're here to get rewarded for that. You're not here to be the worker. You're not. Such a revelation and such a truth inside of me that felt that was awakening and that I was always perhaps shamed for or feeling like I was inadequate or was trying to conform to a different image that uh, society or my parents at the time or whoever was imposing upon me. Uh, so I heard Ra saying these things and I said like, hmm, maybe there is something here. And this is just a fractal. This is a small portion of what happened to me with the human design over and over in all fronts because I started hearing things that rang very true to me. It's something that I've always felt like, but I was perhaps ashamed uh, to think like that or be like that, and I wasn't allowing myself to do so. So human design is in two simple paragraphs. First, it gives you permission. It gives you permission to really be yourself, to really delve deep into yourself and to allow yourself to be the way that you are. Many of the things that you will see in your chart or studying the system, you will say like, ah, oh, I've always felt like that. Ah, oh, it's correct for me to be like that. There's no pressure. It really gives you relief in that sense. And in another way, and this is much more important, it gives you a decision-making system. It allows you to make decisions from your own authority, from your own point of view, from your uniqueness, and you're not overwhelmed all the time by your mind that is always overthinking, always overanalyzing. And the mind is not really made for that. The mind is good to know that you have to take a bus from A to B and okay, it's gonna take 45 minutes or if you put your hand on the fire, you're gonna burn. But when it comes to what is the correct job for me or the correct relationship or who are the people that I want to have around as friends, it's very, very complex. It's something that the mind doesn't have the tools or the horsepower to be able to analyze and give you a correct information, but the body knows, the authority in human design knows. So these are the two most important things that you're gonna be taking away. First, permission to actually allow yourself to be, and second, a decision-making system that does not include the stress and overwhelm of your mind. So when I heard I was a projector, I learned a couple of things. I learned that I wasn't supposed to work all the time, that sometimes I would be needing to rest or maybe just read a book or take a nap and work a couple of hours a day and then rest the rest of the time. I also knew that I was a very perceptive person. I always knew this and it gave me the confirmation that this was true and how can I profit or reap the benefits of this? You know, like I always was capable of seeing people, like I see the face of a person and their demeanor and I can read a lot of things about them. It is, this is like a gift that the projectors have. Unfortunately, I was also a very bitter person. I was always very resentful, very feeling like I got dealt like a bad set of cards in life. Like, oh, what, why did I get this and this and this thing? Oh, why is my life so difficult? Um, always complaining, always complaining, every day, all day long, complaining about every situation in my life. And this would create situations in which people would feel like they wanted to distance themselves from me. And this is a classic theme. It's called the not-self in human design or our shadow. Uh, a classic theme for the projector where we feel this bitterness, this resentfulness, this not feeling seen. And it only creates more and more of that because we approach people and we try to be seen and it comes with this bitter energy and it creates more and more and more isolation and more bitterness. Uh, I was in bed with a pound of gelato chocolato and the very dark thoughts. So I became aware of that and then 
you start thinking, okay, what is it that causes this bitterness? On one hand, it was being overworked or trying to do more things that I needed to do, I, not allowing myself the time to rest and be relaxed and be on, on my element, let's say. So this, this is the first thing that brought me a lot of resentment. So I stopped doing that. I stopped doing that and I started to say like, okay, maybe we need to live our, our life in a different way. So let's turn everything down and let's start doing it much slower at a much slower pace and let's see what happens. And this created a huge transformation, created a different dynamic in the way that I relate with people, the new acquaintances that I meet. This is another aspect of the projector. We need to wait for the invitation. I was always a person, as I told you before, that I could see what was wrong in any situation or a person. Oh, I can see how that can make me made more efficient, or you're doing that wrong, or you can do that better. I was always had an eye for that. But what happens when we projectors do that without an invitation, without the other person recognizing us for our expertise? It feels very repulsive, like someone telling you what to do and you don't even know this person. So that's another thing I had to learn. I had to learn how to see when I'm invited, when that energy that I bring to the table, that vision is accepted, is welcome. This it's a huge deal for us projectors and it took me a really long time to be able to taste what it feels like to be recognized. It really changed a lot of my dynamics in life. The, again, the people that I interacted with, the friends that I have, the job opportunities that I got. Uh, so this was another thing that started changing. I started waiting for that invitation and combined with resting more, it started reducing the bitterness, less and less and less bitterness every day. And this created more invitations and a virtuous circle, bringing me like better friends and more uh, financial prosperity and so on and so forth. But it doesn't end there. Uh, after you know your type and you can go and check your human design profile at Jovian Archive and see which one is your type. I also have some guides that I'll put a link in the description that will tell you the most important bits of every type, every profile, Everything that you need to know to start studying, it comes in a very practical format. I'll put a link below if you want to check them. Another big aspect of human design that helped a lot to decondition a lot of false beliefs uh, were the centers. I have four open centers and wherever you have an open center, these are the white centers in your profile. Uh, in one side you have a big tendency of amplifying the energy that is coming from outside from someone that has that center defined. And on another, you're vulnerable to conditioning for someone making you be something you're not or so-called not self. In my case I think two of the most important ones that I can mention are first the ego or the will center and this is a center that almost 70% of the population have open in white so I think it might be important for some of you. The important thing about this center is you have nothing to prove. If you have an undefined will center, you have nothing to prove. There's no one you need to become. There's no objective that you need to get to. There's nothing that you need to do to be loved, to be accepted. It's not your program to achieve something in your life and only then be loved and accepted. It's not for you. It's not for you to make commitments that you cannot deliver on just to be accepted. This changed a lot in my life. Uh, I used to, in business or even with family or friends, do something that I really didn't want to do so they would accept me. Become this super responsible person or that always like shows up for this thing or another or very strict with deadlines or so on and so forth. I really wanted to try to become someone. It brought me a lot of bitterness. Bitterness is the not self theme of the projector. The other types have uh, anger, frustration, disappointment, but it's the main line of shadow of negative uh, feeling or emotion that you're going to feel in in my case was bitterness i was getting so bitter feeling not seen and not recognized while trying to do these things at the same time as i said before the projector doesn't have consistent energy doesn't have a uh, capacity to work constantly all the time like everyone is expecting you to work eight hours a day you know i, I wasn't that person that never was that person i never had a job like that i, I could never sustain it if I try to do that, if I try to push through that to please my parents or to become an acceptable member of society, I would get burned out and bitter. So trying to become someone or pushing too hard, that wasn't working for me. And I really, I changed that and again, human design gave me the confirmation and now life is 
much more easeful, much more relaxed, and things just flow a lot better for me. Doesn't mean that there are no challenges, but everything is uh, a lot more fluid. And finally, the last thing that I wanted to mention today is the channels. And the channels is kind of like your X-Men superpower. You know, whatever channel you have is one thing that you're really good at, one gift that you have. Now, in my case, I have three channels. I have the Agnia connected to the throat in the 2343 and that is a channel that is good for translation, for explanation, for simplifying concepts and it's because of this, knowing that I, I always had this, but knowing that I have it made me lean into it, made me say like okay this is solid in my life, let's see what I can do with this gift and polish it even further and that's why I like making these videos for you guys uh, trying to simplify a very complex topic you know it's kind of like the mind connected to the throat the expression uh, i also have the one eight which is a very creative channel and i think you can see that for the way that i make my videos or the way that i make my designs and the graphics that i put on i like to be very creative i have this this innate creativity that I, it was always there uh, but in this case being able to see it and being told that I have it again made me lean much uh, more into it and develop it further and trust it and finally the 2838 which is the channel of struggle which for some people sounds like oh that's a gift and it's true that if you have it on a, on a shadow frequency it can be a pain because I was confronted with life all the time like fighting life all the time fighting all the circumstances that were coming to me oh I have to make money or I have to pay the rent or I uh, have to whatever you know always struggling with those things but at the same time on a higher frequency that gave me perseverance how long does it take to start playing a musical instrument like really well maybe like 10 years or to learn Photoshop really well or a video editing program or whatever that is it takes years and years of practice and I always had that I didn't notice that I had it but then I started seeing my friends and other people that had similar interests Maybe they would practice for a bit, do their yoga practice for a bit, and then get tired and stop doing it. And then they're like, no, but I'm practicing yoga for 20 years almost. And it's like, oh, wow, and I never stopped. And I do it every day and it was always easy for me. And it's like, oh, this is actually a gift. This gives me a lot of perseverance. So this gave me a different perspective on life. It gave me a lot more patience. It's like, oh, okay, now I'm struggling with this, but I know if I put the time, when, who knows what will happen in 5, 10, 20 years, you know? Completely different perspective because I know I have what it takes to go the distance. I'm sure you're gonna find in your channels something that is buried inside of you that you know that you have and you can polish further. Those are some of the main aspects of the profile. There's also motivation and the variables. There's so many things that you can look into the profile, but these are the main things, the things that you're gonna be starting with and that you should uh, know and experiment in the first, I don't know, one, two, three years of your human design journey. The experience has been fantastic for me. I learned how to lean into my gifts. I learned a lot about the things that bring me bitterness and out of alignment. I learned a lot about uh, making a living, you know, by doing something that I love and leaning again on these gifts and making something life easeful, a lot more ease in my life. You know, I'm not like crashing against things and, and struggling against things so much as I was before. It, it For me, it was a phenomenal experience. It doesn't mean like it's the only thing that you should do. I also like to do my yoga and my meditation and I have a very clean diet and I like to do biohacking. It's not like the human design is the Bible for everything, but it will give you a blueprint that can really, really improve your life. Maybe now you're thinking, oh, maybe I should do a business course, you know, or, or uh, get a business coach and spend $20,000 on it. Uh, and perhaps you will get the money that you wanted, but you wouldn't get the satisfaction that you needed. Because you're doing all these things uh, in a conditioned way, in a pre-programmed way, in the way that someone else does it. It's successful for them. But even if you get the results, would you be happy if it's not you? I think that's what I want to leave you with uh, with this video. If you want to know more about human design, uh, I have courses, I have this the sign keys cards that have all the information that make it very easy to study. I have free resources. There's a projectors group that is free. Also have a group from non-projectors. I will put everything in the description for you to check. So I hope this was useful for you having a little bit of my own experience with the system. I hope it encourages you to start going into your own experiment yourself. 
I also do sessions. You can click on the link below and see the offers that I have on my website. I can maybe help you unravel your own design and point you in the right direction in your life. Without further ado, thank you very much for watching and see you soon.